All right, gang, here we go. This is for Chem 2. We're on Unit 7, talking about gases. Today we're going to talk about pressure. Should be pretty easy stuff, all things considered. All right, so gases. <clears throat> uh, physical properties of gases are all similar. It makes them really easy and nice to handle. Okay, uh, you know, and a lot of this should be reviewed by now if you've made it this far in your science education. Okay, uh, primarily at room temperature, gases are composed of non-metallic elements. So that's the right-hand side of the periodic table. They got simple formulas, low molar masses. Okay, the more complex and the higher the molar mass, the more likely are they are to be a liquid or solid at room temperature. Okay, so uh, um, defining characteristics of, so of gases, okay, they expand to fill their containers, they're highly compressible, and they have extremely low densities, remember a gas. You know, way back when we talked about a gas, we talked about how these molecules are very, 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 very far apart. Okay, uh, when you have two or more ma gases mixed together, they form a homog homogeneous mixture. Remember, homogeneous means that they are the same throughout. Okay, so it's like a solution. All right, so you can have gases and they mix together. So like uh, the air I'm breathing right now and that hopefully you're breathing right now, okay, is a homogenous mixture. You got uh, mostly nitrogen, some oxygen, and then a bunch of other carbon dioxide and trace out gases and stuff like that. All right, uh, here's some common gases that are, you know, hanging around. You got hydrogen cyanide, super toxic, okay? It kind of smells like bitter almonds, or so they say. I don't know exactly what bitter almonds smell like, but supposedly that's what they smell like. Very bad stuff. Do not smell this stuff on purpose. It's bad for you. Um, <clears throat> and then hydrogen sulfide, okay? This is that smell of rotten eggs that I'm sure you've smelled before. Also very toxic. This is a great example of one of those things that your body has like, or that the human body has evolved to fear, okay? So that's why you can smell it so easily when your eggs go bad. You can smell it from across the room because your body, had, because hydrogen sulfide is so bad for you, okay? Uh, it replaces is the oxygen in your in your uh, hemoglobin all right and so anyway so as it replaces or because it's so very bad for you it's uh <clears throat> it replaces or because it's so very bad for you, your body has automatically uh evolved to detect even the smallest amounts parts per billion worth of hydrogen sulfide okay carbon monoxide dioxide methane Okay, ethylene or ethane, ethene. Okay, this stuff actually ripens fruit, and uh, I'm pretty sure this is produced as fruit ripens itself. So it's kind of like this, uh, this you know, circular uh, reaction that occurs. As the fruit ripens, it produces more of this ethylene, and then continuously. So this is why when you go to the grocery store, sometimes you'll see these bags that are essentially just paper bags that says the the food ri or fruit ripener or something like that. And essentially all it is is a bag that won't let the ethylene escape. So really you could stick it in a plastic bag and uh, all your fruit would ripen at the same time. Propane, nitrous uh, oxide, okay, uh, or dinitrogen monoxide. Okay, this is a laughing gas. Okay, you got ammonia, sulfur dioxide, lots of fun stuff. Okay, so properties that define the state of a gas. Okay, temperature, pressure, and volume. Okay, and then the amount of gas. So you should know for you sleuthy Chem 1 students, you should recognize this idea of the PV equals NRT. Remember this guy here. And so this is essentially the four big guys that go into this that help us predict the properties of gases. Okay, pressure, volume, moles, and temperature. And remember, this is our constant. We'll get all this into it in a couple of videos. All right, <clears throat> but we've already talked a lot about moles. We've talked a lot about volume. We've talked a lot about temperature. So we're gonna focus on this guy here for the rest of the video, the pressure. All right, pressure generally, okay, is defined as the force applied over an area, okay? <clears throat> and uh, that's about it, okay? So like atmospheric pressure is literally all the, the force applied over an area. So for example, if you're standing there at sea level and you hold out your hand, for every square inch of your hand that you're holding out, there is 14.7 pounds pushing down on your hand. Okay, and that's that's the atmospheric pressure in, in PSI or pounds per square inch. Garbage unit because it uses inches, right? We only use the metric system here in chemistry world. All right. So atmospheric pressure is the weight of the air per unit area. All right. <clears throat> so bunch of units of pressure. Okay, pressure has been known about for a long, long time. All right. Uh, so there's been lots of different units of pressure. The SI unit for pressure is in pascals. Okay, it's in the it's defined as the newton per meter squared, which makes sense because uh, if pressure is equal to force over area. Okay, air force is defined as in newtons. That's our unit for force, and area is. Uh, 
length times width, which are both in meters, okay, and then be meters times meters or meters squared. So it's a newton meter. So that's the Pascal. Now a newton per meter squared. This is an absurdly tiny unit. Like a, a newton is a is a really small amount, okay. Um, of force, okay. Uh, so it's a, it's a really tiny amount, and then a meter, a square meter, is actually pretty big, right? Uh, you imagine two meter sticks that kind of make like a, a right angle, and then how much area that takes up. So you imagine that one newton being applied over equally over that entire meter. It's a really small amount. So Pascal is a really tiny value. So it's not really used very often. Uh, if we measure things in Pascals, we usually talk about them in kilopascals, which is you know just a thousand Pascals. So uh, um, so that's the primary way we use Pascals. Okay, there's also a bar. Okay, which is a competing uh, SI unit, and it's a hundred thousand uh, Pascals, or ten to the fifth Pascals. Okay, or hundred kilopascals. Another really common one is millimeters of mercury, or Tor. Tor is kind of interesting. It's actually named after a. a uh, I think he's Italian, named Torticelli or something like that. Okay, uh, and it's, I don't know. I feel kind of bad for the guy because um, he gets a unit named after him, the Tor. That's pretty cool. But they shorten his name, and then they don't even bother to capitalize it. What's that about? You know. Uh, but anyway, okay. Uh, so these are based off of the height that a mercury column gets risen, hence the millimeters of mercury. So here's an example of an old school barometer using actual mercury. Okay, so you got a basin of mercury down here, it's got a bunch of mercury, all right, and the atmospheric pressure pushes down, and then inside of here, you have an evacuated, vacu evacuated tomb, meaning there's no air in there, okay, and the pressure of the air pushes down, and then it pushes the mercury back up inside of the tube, going back up in the, this way, and then the pressure, Okay, is measured as the actual height of the mercury that it reaches, or millimeters of mercury. Okay, and uh, the, uh, millimeters of mercury and tor are exactly equal to each other. All right, and then finally we have the one that we probably use the most in chemistry, and that's the atmosphere. Okay, and the atmosphere is defined as the pressure that Earth's atmosphere applies at sea level. And we use this one because we live on Earth and we have an atmosphere and it's pretty much stable, which is kind of nice. All right, so we have one atmosphere. All right, and so this is your big conversion factors that you'll want to have memorized. All right, some of these are given on the back of our little sheet. Okay, some of them you'll just have to memorize. One atmosphere is equal to 760 torr, 760 millimeters mercury, 101.325 kPa, or 1.10325 bar. Okay, another one you might want to know is 14.70 uh, pounds per inches squared. All right, that might be another one to keep in, keep track of. All right, uh, this guy here is called a manometer. Okay, manometer, it's like the for Sesame Street or whatever. All right, uh, is used to measure the difference in pressure between atmospheric pressure and that of a gas in a vessel. So you essentially, what happens is you put gas in a vessel like this, and then you attach it to a U tube. Yes, a U tube. Okay, and then uh, fill it halfway with mercury. Okay, uh, you could really use any non-compressible fluid, so really any liquid would work fine, but a lot of times we use mercury because we have millimeters of mercury, and depending on the density of whatever fluid you're using, you have to th do some conversion. So mercury is most often used. But anyway, so you have this manometer, you have this U-tube set up, okay, and then <clears throat> the pressure of the atmosphere, so this is called an open-end manometer, and there's lots of different kinds. You can have closed-end or open-end manometers. And then, uh, so the atmospheric pressure is going to push on one side, and, the and your gas in here is going to push on the other and it's kind of a, a tug of war all right between the two you know this is going to push against this side and this side is going to push against this side and it's kind of who's pushing harder depends on what the level is now in this case you can see that the pressure of the gas is pushing harder than the pressure of the atmosphere we know that because the mercury level is lower than the mercury level from the atmosphere side all right so this tells us that whatever happens we should uh that the pressure of the gas that we calculate should be greater than the pressure of the atmosphere that we have. All right, so, so that's pretty easy. So pressure of gas. So this is our general formula. Okay, the pressure of the gas is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere plus the height. All right, and that's when we talk about pressure height because it's talking about millimeters of mercury, which is a unit for pressure. All right. <clears throat> um, and in this case, we'll add these two values together because we know that this, pre this gas 
pressure had better be more than the atmospheric pressure. So we take the atmospheric pressure, add this difference right here, and that will be give us our gas pressure. If it was opposite and the mercury value higher was higher on this side, we know that this has to be less than atmospheric pressure, so we just simply have to subtract them. All right, we'll do a practice problems here. Oops. All right, <clears throat> it says on a certain day, a, pre a laboratory barometer indicates the atmospheric pressure is 764.7 torr. A sample of gas is placed in a flask attached to an open end mercury th manometer, and a meter stick is used to measure the height of the mercury in the two arms of the U tube. The height of the mercury in the open end arm is 136.4, and the height of the arm in contact with the gas of the flask is 103.8. What is the pressure? So they've even nicely labeled this out for us. It says, What is the pressure in the gas in atmospheres and kilopascals? All right, so first let's find it. This will be in millimeters of mercury because that we're, fluid is in mercury. So we're going to solve for that first. So pressure of the gas is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere, okay, plus the height. All right, so that means the pressure of the gas would be equal to the pressure of the atmosphere. Well, that's easy. They just give us that right there. So 764.7. Now, notice that they give it to us in tor, and these guys are in millimeters in mercury. Um, but that makes it easy because tor and millimeter mercury are exactly the same. So we don't have to worry about converting that. So that's 764.7. Um, and we'll just convert that straight into millimeters of mercury. All right. And then we're going to add the height pressure. Now, the height pressure is going to be the difference in these two, so we're going to have to subtract these. So 136.4 minus 103.8. All right, and we add them all together. So we say uh, 136.4 minus 103.8, and then we add 764.7, we get 797.3. our units are in millimeters or mercury. All right, so that doesn't quite answer our question. That's just the pressure of our gas. But it asks us for the pressure in atmospheres and kilopascals. So, <clears throat> all right, so let's see if we can do this here. So we'll take 797.3 millimeters of mercury. We're going to convert that into atmospheres. All right, so we're going to put millimeters of mercury down here, put atmospheres up here. Okay, and we can look at our conversions if you haven't memorized them yet. We see that one atmosphere equals 760 millimeters of mercury. So one atmosphere goes there and then 760 millimeters of mercury. So we just take our 797.3 divided by 760 and we get 1.049 for sig figs. 1.049 and then we're in atmospheres. All right, and then uh, for part B, we want to get that into KPA. Okay, so we'll say 797.3 millimeters of mercury. Okay, and we're going to convert that into KPA. So we'll put millimeters of mercury in the bottom, squiggle, squiggle, HG, and then uh, KPA in the top. All right, now we have to look at our transition. So it says here that 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to 101.325 KPA. So we'll put 760 and 101.325 up here. All right. So we'll take our 1.049 times 101.325, get 106.3. 106.3 kPa. Simple enough. So there's your answers. All right. Uh, last little bit here. Standard pressure is defined as normal atmospheric pressure at sea level. Okay. And this is defined as standard atmospheric pressure, and these are kind of what it's equal to. These numbers should look very familiar because they're the same as the ratios that we just gave you a second ago. And that's it for the first little bit of gases. Shouldn't be too hard. I uh, hope you're enjoying Chem 2. Have fun. I'll talk to you later.